Welcome back to the second issue of the day. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has asked President Muhammadu Buhari to stop the 36 governors from borrowing from the 17 trillion pension funds. Through a statement issued by his deputy director, Kolawali Uluwadari, the organization said if the governors are allowed to proceed with borrowing from the pension fund, it will prove it will be detrimental to the interest of the phone. They also highlighted vulnerability of the system to corruption. Joining us to make sense of this, we have both, we have an economist and a political analyst. Uh, for the economist, we have Mokhtar Mohammed. Good evening, Mokhtar Mohammed. And we also have uh, Mr. Bola. Thank Oba. you so much. Yeah, yeah we also have Mr. Bola. But good evening. Good to have both of you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, let's quickly start with the economist. Now, some would say that are we not just um, crying when there is no need to cry? That uh, what usually happens to a phone that is supposedly safe to undo some infrastructural deficit, which is expected to be refunded, is it? really an issue or it is about the issue of trust? Well, uh, when you look at the act uh, establishing the pension fund, then it's an issue because the act does not permit for borrowing. The act only permit for investment of those funds. Okay. You won't, you won't say that government have not borrowed from the pension fund before, but they are borrowed through investment purposes. Like when government are uh, doing federal government bonds, um, uh, uh, state government bonds, so you can borrow, but the act does not permit government to realistically borrow from that fund. It must be in a, in a source of investment, and that investment must be saved with a definite returns. So you can't just say the pension fund money is there for you to borrow. No, it, there is no room for that, for the pension fund money to be borrowed by any government. The only rule is that that money can only be invested. If government has government bond, state government have their infrastructural bond, maybe now they're trying to set up an infrastructural bond, the pension, uh, the pension fund administrators and uh, PENCON can invest some of those money in those places, but it is not permitted in any law, according to the act, for the money of the pensioners, money that kept by pension should be borrowed to a government. No, it has never been done, unless through an investment purpose with a fixed determined returns, because pension fund uh, funds are only meant to be invested for, 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 for investment purposes, not to be used as, okay. a, uh, as a means of borrowing to uh, any organ of government, Thank even you. private or public, uh, both private or public. Thank you for that opening remark. I was still going to ask you, when you now do such investments, is the profit or the interest also going to be accrued to these pensioners? You will answer that later on. But let me uh, get Mr. Bolaoba's opening remark on this. My question to you is, is it a case of, uh, uh, should it take Sarah to open this can of worms, or this is a normal thing that government wouldn't have bothered whether we know or not? And your question is? I said, I said my question is, should this thing be revealed to us by Serap, or if government has nothing hidden, why shouldn't this information come from them? Serap is doing what Serap was set up to do. Be the legal instrument to act as the social conscience of the society. As wonderful as Serap is playing that role, as much as I respect Serap for almost all the things they have chased, or all the issues they have brought into the public glare, and as much as I respect the fact that Sarah uses the potency 
of a ju judicial system to protect the common interest of Nigerians, I think Sarah is wrong by half on this subject. And Sarah is wrong by half because Sarah, in wanting to correct a wrong, has unfortunately now given an impression that pension funds are meant to be so guarded that they should not be called upon for investment purposes. I want to believe that it is now incumbent on Sarah to enlighten the average Nigerian that what ought to be done is that that fund should be taken to the capital market. We will never become the kind of society we ought to be if such a fund is not called upon for sustainable physical infrastructural development, as in infrastructure, as in schools, reason is that such funds would allow for long-term long -term, uh, financing of projects. Look, we are in a society where 95 to 98% of those who own houses have had to build those houses themselves. That in itself is that in itself is foiling the degree of corruption in our system. However, if a sizable percentage of the pension funds were to be available for mortgage investments, mortgage investments are that Nigerians can assess, many who are earning from around 60,000 Naira would be living in their houses. But unfortunately, this move by Sarah, on the one hand, I cannot fault the social conscience value of the move, given the kleptocracy that we have seen, that we have seen many of those, many of the past governors and incumbent governors given to, I cannot say their shout, their cry for of wolf without a wolf at this juncture is not necessary. But I will also say to Nigerians that Sarah's position is inimical primarily to the good of the pensioners because if the fund is not systemically activated in a, in a well-situated investment pool, the fund will not also grow systemically. Okay. And also, if the fund is not activated in a well-guided and well-guided investment pool, long-term okay. development of society would be negatively affected. Okay, thank Not you so much. Not only the infrastructure, but I gave the example of Mogbe. Okay, Mr. Golaba, I, I, I think I appreciate the angle you are bringing into this conversation. And to a large extent, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so feeling bad now that we have limited time to throw more light on that. But let me quickly rush to uh, Mokhtar Mohammed. Now, he has brought in almost the same perception you brought in into this conversation. And it suggests to me that uh, probably Sarah hasn't given us a full picture of what exactly is their fear. I understand that this kind of uh, in, uh, pension it's free to be invested, and uh, the pensioners should also be happy to have this in place. So can we redirect this discussion to say that it is about what this pension fund is meant for and not necessarily you know, using it and denying them when the, when the need arises? I, I think the problem, well, the thing I see about that, Sarah is not saying, uh, maybe directly when that is not saying those funds should not be ad, um, ad, um, invested. I just read the act to you that says that those funds must be invested. But there's no place in the act that says those funds should be borrowed. 
there's no fund that's fund those funds should be borrowed those funds are only an investment fund so if government wants those funds they will create their own investment vehicle come out through the capital market then the the pension fund have liberty to invest in it or not so it's not something that you can just call the pension fund that oh we as the government forum want to we want to collect about 17 trillion and unfortunately Unfortunately, the pension fund as it stands today is not even up to 17 trillion. At the September report from the pension fund is about 11.56 trillion. So it's not even up to 17 trillion. And out of that 11.63 trillion, 8 trillion of that money is in active investment, which have been invested in real estate, in securities, in bond, in treasury. So what we have there is what we call the safety net also. The ones that will not be invested because some of the time the pensioners need it, or the ones that we put in safe investment. So it's not about the noise that um, um, uh, Sarah is making. It's just they are saying, please, we have seen it happen in other developed nations when pension funds were wiped out completely because of mismanagement, and the pensioners begin to suffer for it, especially in times of economic downturn like this. So if you want to do an investment, it must be a variable investment that we in turn have a role to play in the life of the pensioners. You don't even give government, the kind, the kind of government we have now that are yet making bogus, they are still making, uh, giving bogus uh, uh, appointments, making, uh, having eight upon eight. They are living their lifestyle. Their lifestyle has not changed. That same government you want to use, add, use hard end money of pensioners to put in their hands about 17 trillion. That's just that the government is not even the government for are not even doing their hard their, their own homework. The pension fund is not up to 17 trillion. Are you going to borrow everything? Okay. The uh, government have set up an infrastructural bank. Mokta, trust so you, me, this is a conversation. To go, infrastructure, go through the infrastructural bank. It's, this is an this is a conversation that is inexhaustive and time is really fast spent. So uh Balaba, let me quickly get your final comment. I understand my time is almost up. Balaba, I, I, I think um, in clear terms, the fear is when you are talking about investment, infrastructural development in this part of the world looks like not a good viable investment. So why can't we look at maybe because, stock market and the rest? Because the elite, the elite have unfortunately because of the major accomplishments, historic accomplishments of administrators like Chief of Afemi Awola, who gave free education, because of the major accomplishments like Chief of Afemi Awola, who gave Liberty Stadium a major infrastructure, on the fact that they had encouraged farmers, cocoa farmers, and because they had encouraged cocoa farmers, the returns from cocoa was used to build those infrastructure for the benefit of the many. But you know what? Many politicians wanted to copy the likes of Shifobobata Miawolo and forgotten that the first indigenous politician that Nigerians, women of Western region, protested against when they wanted to enunciate when they wanted to enunciate free education, was to propose me a wallower because it was a measure that made him to tax rural women. And rural women came to Ibado, half naked, protesting against him. And he kept telling them, These days, politicians tell people that they can have some infrastructure for free. Nothing, they don't feel me anywhere in the world. Hmm. We should learn. That roads like Nicholas Ibadan like Express Road, roads like Nicholas Ibadan Express Road, if we want those roads to be in the state that is blue, hmm. should be tall. And to okay. most Nigerians who went to school, who okay, went to school in the 70s and the 80s, that sounds almost like an anathema. You know what? The politicians are bad, but our intellig intelligentsia too are intellectually moribund. Interesting. I am one who believes Interesting. That pressure funds should so, be taken to the capital. It's been it's been catalogue of uh, blames and often blames, and uh, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, we cannot go further than than these. Uh, it's been quite. Uh,
insightful, though short, but I feel that this is a conversation that needs to be reopened. We'll keep tap. We'll see what comes out of it so that the right things are done at the right time. I'm so sorry, Mokhtar Mohammed. I see you have so much to tell us. You have so, some other points to still talk about. Balaba, it's obvious that you still have so many things in your arsenal to tell us, but let's the conversation continue on our YouTube channel. Let it also continue on our Facebook so that people can get more insight from you. I believe both of you have subscribed to our YouTube channel so that they can, our, our viewers can follow you up there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, um, uh, we will have to wrap it up because um, some other issues, and uh, maybe by eight o'clock, you should stay tuned to watch ways. It promises to be another exciting moment, but this is what we call it a wrap on today's edition of Plus Politics. May I also inform you that Plus Politics will not be coming up tomorrow, but you can watch a repeat of this tomorrow if uh, time permits you to still see a repeat of this broadcast. We'll have a live transmission that will be coming up on our station. So till we meet again, I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.